Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be looking at how to create numbers on the sides of faces like this. So this is basically a very simple dice and on the sides we have the numbers on there. Now it's easy to create sketches on here and pocket or pad those in there but how do we actually create text and numbers and attach them to these sides and allow us to do the same, either pocket or pad these. So this is a question that's been asked by a viewer on the channel. I hope this answers the question and allows you to progress for that project. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So I'm in FreeCAD, I'm in the part design workbench, and I've created a new document. So we're going to come over to tasks and create a body and create a sketch. Place it along the XY plane. So we can see that plane is sitting there. So if we're looking down from the top, we can see the planes there. Hit OK, and we need to create our dice. Now I'm going for basically a square dice in here. So add our square, and we'll add some dimensions. So I'm going to say this length here is 20 millimeters. Now I need to make this length and this length to make this a square equal, and then we'll use this point and this point and the center of our sketch and use the symmetry constraint against there. So it's just done a basic square in here. So a simple square. So it's 20 millimeters. We're going to close that. And now we're going to make a cube by using the pad. So I'm going to bring this around. We've got tasks. We've got pad on this side. The sketch has been selected. So you can see the model of the sketch has been selected. Click pad. And then we can type in a length, so 20 millimeters. And we've created our basic cube for our dice. Now I'm going to make this a bit more interesting because I want a few more faces in here. So to do that, I'm going to chamfer this cube. So increasing it from six faces up to eight faces. To do that, I'm going to take the top face here and control click the bottom face. Now we've got a number of options on the left hand side that have come up and I'm going to select chamfer from the face tools. When we increase the chamfer, you can see what's happening. If we go past the size of nine millimeters, then it actually goes into error and we get the cube back. So we've got to make this something like 9.8. And we have basically a little face along here. Let's see if we can reduce this down a bit more. So 9.9 .9 and add a nine on the end. And there it goes. It's basically gone. For this demonstration, that's all we need. So we have this diamond dice. So we need to add some numbers to this. Now I don't want dots. I just want the numbers on here. This is quite easy to do once you know how like everything in life. So we go over to the draft workbench and we're going to be using the draft tools on the draft workbench. So we're utilizing another workbench. But the thing is we can use those in the body. So if I wanted to add text to here, well, how do I get it onto these faces? First things first, we need to show the grid. So we've got this waffle icon down here which we can show and hide the grid. It's not down there. We go to utilities and go to toggle grid. And that's there. So at the moment, this grid is actually aligned with that face. What normally happens when this comes up is that it will be aligned down the bottom. So it'd be sitting on the bottom. I'm just going to change that. So I'm going to make sure nothing's selected. Come into the utilities and select plane. I'm going to select top. So this is your default, what would normally be your default. I've got to move this plane onto one of these faces to allow me to add geometry on there. So we've got these geometry along here, very much like the sketcher, 
But we've also got this tool here, creates a shape from a string, and this is the one we're gonna be using. We click a face, and we've got to move this grid, which is known as the working plane. So once the face is selected, come up to utilities, and then select plane. That moves that grid in onto that face. That means that we can do some geometry on there, or we can add text, and also our snapping works. So we've got a number of tools up here, the move and rotate, which we'll be using to actually move those items. Next thing I've got to do is add some text. So come up to this tool here, or we can go to the drafting and shape from text. You can see that we've got a crosshairs and it's asking us to put the text somewhere on the screen. Now, if we've got the snapping enabled, snap lock on, we've got a number of snapping options up here. So we've got the padlock, the snap to endpoints, and when they're highlighted, that means they're activated. So at the moment, I've got snap to endpoints and the center snap, so I can center snap to the center of these faces and the center of the object, and also the endpoints. So these endpoints here. So I'm just gonna pick an arbitrary point over here. So around about here, and this is just show we can actually move this over onto our object. You can see our X, Y, and Z have changed and they stuck, so I can move around here and these don't move. We've got the option to reset a point or we can click and pick other points around our scene. And coming to the string, so this is our text. I'm gonna put a one in here, so I want the one to be placed on the screen. We've got the height, just gonna leave that as is for the time being, and we've got the font file. Now this will be location of fonts. I'm on Ubuntu, so I'm gonna go back a directory, go to user, and then come down to share, and then come down to fonts. So this one here, this fonts. Go into that, and then we use true type fonts, and then we just pick the font that we want. I'm gonna pick Deja Vu, and I'm gonna go for the bold, and we'll open that. That's added that font there. Now if I hit OK, our text will be added to the screen. Now if we look, place some angle on here, you can see that our working plane is aligned with that text. I'm gonna use the move tool to actually move this into place. Now again, we can use the snapping for this. So we've got the snap lock on, and I've got it on endpoint and center. So when I select the shape string and then come up to modifications and move or use the move tool on the toolbar, we now got the crosshairs. You can see we've got a location X, Y, and Z over the left-hand side. And I can snap to this, I can place this on the center. And we just click once and release, and this makes this mobile. So I can drag this about now. I'm gonna come over and I can snap this to that face. Or if I don't want to snap, I can come up, take the snapping off, and just place that on that face like that. I'm gonna leave the snapping on, and I'll just place it on that face. And now I can click on that shape string, I'm gonna rotate this. Again, up to modifications and rotate. And we now have a snapping but for the rotation. So I want to snap to the center. I want to click once and then I move a line out. So this is gonna be my handler to actually move this. So I've clicked then unclicked and moved the line out. I'm just gonna come out to about here, click, and then I can rotate this. So I've just clicked, released and rotated and I can move this screen with the shift or whatever touchpad controls you're using. So I'm on the touchpad. So I meant to say navigation controls. So we've got a number of navigation controls. I use the touchpad one here. So I know that shift moves my screen and we'll come up and I can either use the snap in. So I snap to this point or I can just place this somewhere like that. 
Let's just click and our numbers on there. I'm going to come down and change the size of this. This is too big. So click on the shape string, come down to the size, and we'll reduce this size. I'm going to hit Control R on the keyboard so I can see the changes happen. So that will do me. I now have to do some modifications on the placement. So again, modifications, move, and we'll take, let's take this point here. And we'll move that, let's take the snapping off. And I'm gonna move it to about here and press the left mouse button. So now we've got this one against this face. Let's do it for another face, so it's the same process. We haven't finished with this yet. We still got to use this in the body. And we'll show you how to do that in a moment. So I'm going to select, I select this face this time. This face, face next to it. Utilities, select plane. Now I'm going to get a couple of numbers on here so I can show you how you can change the properties of all at once. So now we're on that face. We're going to use the shape text. To this one here, I'm going to take it from the toolbar this time and place that on here just to click. And we'll go for a default string of two. And the font file, you can see that's zeroed back out. So we have to remember our font, but I'll show you a trick with this in a minute. So we'll go for deja vu sans bold and open that and hit OK. Again, we need to do some modifications, so make sure it's selected and we can use the move tool. And we'll move this into position. Let's change the size of this as well. What's the size of our other one? It's eight, so let's change the size of this to eight. And also we need to rotate this. So I'm gonna select that and hit rotate. And again, let's put the snapping on and we'll snap. There's nothing really with this that we can snap to. So I'm going to take that snapping off and just click that face, flat to come out the line and rotate it around this way. Just drop it. And finally, I'm going to move that down to here. So now they're more or less in position. We can do some finer adjustments. I'm going to show you how to actually change the properties of these at once. So to do that, we just control click both of those. So click one, control click the other, or shift click if you have a number here. So just click one and then shift click the last one and that will highlight in everything in between. We now got those selected. If we come down to the size, we can change this and this will affect the size. If I hit control R of both of those items. The same if we come down and change, say, the font. This font here, come in. And we'll change it to a different font. So let's go for Ubuntu and Ubuntu C. And hit Control R. And let's change that font there. So you can see how we can easily change those. If we change the string, I know it's saying one is one and two, if we change that to something, then these will both be updated to that string. So we don't really want to touch that one. Let's just change this back. And we'll go for the bold. Hit Control R, and those are in place. Now we've got those numbers on there, how do we pad those or pocket those into the object. They sit outside at the moment. All we'd have to do is in the part design, I'm just gonna take this grid off. So I click the grid so it's invisible. Come over to the part design, come up, part design. And we take the shape string and drag it into our body. And that places it inside the body. This can now be just used as normal geometry. So we can take that shape string and pad or pocket that into our object. 
So I'm just going to go in one millimeter on that and hit OK. So you can see that in there. So that face of that shape string has been padded or pocketed, depending on what one you choose, into your object. And let's do the other one. Let's pocket that. Hit the pocket. And one millimeter. And now those are in the object. If we've pocketed these in here, we can still go in and say, I want to change the number of this one, this one here. I can come into that shape string, this one, pressing the spacebar just to show it. And I'm going to set this one to, say, 8. And that will change on that pocket. So that's it. That's how to get the numbers and characters on the faces of a part design object used in part design and draft workbench. Hope you found this useful. Hope you found it interesting. And I'll see you again soon. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.